Berkendara menggunakan sepeda adalah suatu kebiasaan baik yang tak hanya menyehatkan jasmani namun dapat mengurangi jumlah polusi udara yang kian hari kian mengganggu. Di berbagai negara yang ada di dunia, kebiasaan baik ini telah menjadi budaya yang turun-menurun diwariskan dari generasi ke generasi. Bahkan, Para penduduknya lebih senang menaiki sepeda ketimbang motor atau mobil seperti yang biasa dinaiki masyarakat Indonesia saat akan bepergian. Berikut ini, beberapa negara yang gemar menggunakan sepeda daripada naik mobil. 5 Negara Sepeda Sebagai Transportasi Utama 1. Belgi Jika kamu pergi ke negara Belgi, kamu pasti akan melihat banyak sekali orang-orang yang memakai sepeda saat akan bepergian, baik ketika akan pergi bekerja, sekolah, atau berbelanja. Namun, meski banyak warga yang gemar memakai sepeda saat beraktivitas, di negara ini sepeda merupakan barang yang mahal. Oleh sebab itu, banyak warga yang memilih untuk menyewa sepeda di tempat penyewaan. Tak hanya warganya saja yang gemar menaiki sepeda, para anggota kerajaan dan beberapa pejabat pun juga gemar menaiki sepeda. Contohnya pada saat Putri Isabel memakai baju putih saat menaiki sepeda dan terpotret oleh para kuli tinta. 2. Belanda Sampai saat ini, Belanda masih memegang predikat sebagai negara yang memiliki rute sepeda terbaik yang ada di dunia. Pemerintah Belanda juga sangat memfasilitasi pengguna sepeda dengan sangat baik. Hampir di setiap penjuru kota selalu disediakan lahan parkir sepeda dan jalan-jalan yang dibuat untuk sepeda pun dibuat luas. Sedangkan lahan parkir untuk mobil pribadi sangat dibatasi di negara ini. 3. Jepang Orang-orang di Jepang dikenal memiliki tingkat kesadaran yang tinggi dalam menjaga lingkungan. Meski Jepang merupakan salah satu produsen motor terbesar di dunia, orang Jepang lebih suka menaiki sepeda saat akan bepergian jika tak ingin naik transportasi umum. Sehingga udara di sana pun terjaga dan lebih bersih. 4. Tiongkok Mungkin Tiongkok adalah satu-satunya negara di dunia yang pernah mengalami kemacetan akibat membludaknya pengguna sepeda. Bulan April tahun 2017 lalu, Tiongkok menjadi pemberitaan viral di media internasional ketika terjadinya kemacetan pengendara sepeda di kawasan Shenzhen, Tiongkok. Kemacetan tersebut berlangsung berhari-hari sampai para penggunanya pun banyak meninggalkan sepedanya di jalanan. 5. Swiss Berkeliling di kota-kota di Swiss sambil melihat pemandangan pegunungannya yang indah merupakan hal yang sangat tak terlupakan. Swiss merupakan salah satu negara di Eropa yang memiliki pemandangan alam yang sangat eksotis dan juga indah. Orang di Swiss gemar sekali menaiki gunung sambil bersepeda. Bagaimana menurut teman-teman? Seru bukan? Jika bisa diterapkan di negara kita, mungkin kualitas udara di sini akan jauh lebih baik. Ayo mulai hidup sehat dengan bersepeda. Di video ini adalah suatu teladan persepedaan di negara Belanda khususnya di kota Groningen, Nederland. Selamat menikmati. Okay, well, now we are in Groningen. I, I live here from 1979, so quite a long time. It was a fortress town for a thousand years. This was the town that guarded the routes into Germany. It's the fortress of the north. Consequences of that, the city was contained within the military fort fortifications until very late in the 19th century. So there is no sprawl. It, it, it didn't expand outwards 
Which meant, of course, that now we say, hey, we've got a wonderful compact city and we can reach everything by foot or bicycle or whatever. Well, in 1972, uh, uh, Groningen get a, a left-wing uh, local government. And that's the start of, the, the, I think, the bicycle culture. This small group of young, enthusiastic, left-wing, ideological people and said, right, we're going to change everything radically. And one of the things they picked on was transport. And in September 1977, they introduced the traffic circulation plan, which means that the city centre was diverted in four different quarters. And that means that cars couldn't go from one quarter to the other quarter. They have to go around the city centre. But cyclists, buses, pedestrians, they can go through. You put a ring road around the inner city, uh, you prevent traffic crossing the inner city, you divide it into sectors, you pedestrianize the center, you move all your car parking out to the edge, you have park and ride schemes, etc, etc, etc. But if you're making a journey inside the city, then you can start and finish in a different part of the city and take a direct line between the two. But if you go by car, you have to take a detour. This is not really an anti-car measure. What this is, is making the neighborhoods where people live more pleasant and making cycling into a viable option. And everyone said, it can't work, this is impossible. The shopkeepers said, we'll, we'll leave the city immediately. Uh, no, everyone must park in front of our door, otherwise we will lose all our business. And then, wonder of wonders, uh, the world didn't collapse. The shops didn't leave the city. Uh, the police found, yes, people could learn how to handle this plan. People adapted to it. And that was, as I say, 1977. In the last couple of years, uh, the area of uh, calming traffic has, be, uh, has increased. So uh, nowadays it's just normal that you go on the bike to the city centre. In Gronia, the average person cycles 1.4 times a day. Okay, so that's, that's, that's how it goes. Ten times a week people ride a bike somewhere. It's a very comfortable way of transportation. Above everything, it's very, very economical. So you don't have to pay for buses or trains. With the bike, I go uh, through downtown, through the center of Groningen, and then I'm at my work. When I use my car, I have to go through the Ringweg, they call it here. So it takes about, I think, half an hour. And with my bike, it's 10 minutes. You need your bike here definitely because you needed to go to university, you needed to go to a party. You can transport everything on the bike, so you see people here riding bike. You can even transport the fridge if you want to. Then you put the fridge on the back of the bike and you just push the bike, but it will bring it somewhere somehow. We are at the central station of Groningen, we call it Hoofdstation, main station. And we've got three different places where you can park your bike. Now we're just in front of the what we call Stadsbalkon, uh, town balcony you can call it, with a free parking place for around about 5,000 bicycles. It's free, you don't have to pay, uh, but people are looking after it, so it's a kind of a, of a guarded bicycle park. All the places have got a sensor. The, the Stadsbalkony is uh, diverted in different areas, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. When you see the sign over there, it shows you how much places are still free. But the one over here on the right hand side, that's the formal bicycle parking, which is a guarded one. You have to pay for it, just for a day ticket, a month ticket, and it's open till uh, the last train arrives in Groningen, around about two o'clock at night. And then, we far the back, uh, we've got what we call a bicycle flat, which is uh, free, but is nobody who uh, looks after it. And on the south side of the station, there are also parking places. Uh, so the total amount of bike parking facilities is around about 10,000. And in the weekend, it's all full. That's an OVA feed. That's the shared bicycle system in the Netherlands. And you can pick up those bicycles at, I think it's 340 stations now around the country. And so it's probably the biggest bike share system in the world now. It's intended for people who've used public transport. So the idea is that if you have cycled to the railway station in your own town, and then you've taken the train, and then you can use one of these bikes at the other end as the other part of your commute. Why ride a bicycle? Because it's much easier than uh, taking the bus, and the car is way too expensive to have in the city. I mean, the infrastructure is great, there's bicycle lanes everywhere. So, yeah, that's basically the reason I 
ride my bike uh, everywhere. But I have to go, so Goodbye. good luck filming. Have fun. You're not going to get a cycling revolution by having a few 30 kilometers an hour streets. You're not going to get it by building just a few cycle paths. And you're not going to get it by traffic calming just a few streets either. You have to do everything and you have to do it everywhere. You never have to ride more than a few hundred meters from your home in the Netherlands in order to find yourself on a facility of such quality that you will be happy to cycle on it and you'll be happy for your children to cycle on it. to make new areas around the town within a boundary of say five till seven kilometers and not uh, that we've spread all the new areas far away from the town center. Out of a point of, uh, of a compact city and the mobility aspects it's much better taking the bike or walk into the town uh, instead of using the car and this bridge is one of the projects which gives you the opportunity to use the bike or go uh, on your feet to the shops which are on the other side. So it's a very easy and quickest way to go from the new area over here and to go to the area down there. Not using your car, but go on the bike. Employers must submit to the local authority um, a, a plan, a scheme, a set of ideas. What are they doing in order to encourage their employees not to use motor cars? And this can come in all sorts of forms. It could be they do no more than put in some covered bike parking and some showers or lockers. But some places have offered free public transport, others have offered a bonus to people that say they're not using their motor cars. Um, so the idea is to discourage parking. This idea is one of the largest in the world. It's the largest this side of Berlin. So there is also a lot of car parking. But the cycle parking here is still quite generous. Here you can see this a special cycle path just right into the entrance. We go straight on and we cycle just right into the shop. Although it's summer, as you can see how much people are using the bike going to the IKEA. So I presume that maybe in the next couple of years they will put some more. This is the uh, parking place for the employment uh, of, uh, of IKEA. And you can see that uh, uh, most of them are coming on the bike and use the, the bike place to park their bike. Yeah, I think it's great. Because one, you save room for the customer because they, you don't park there. And if you have a private stelling place, it encourages people to go on their bike. It's quite common to see students moving house with these because there were 50,000 students in Groningen and you can hire these for just 250 an hour and so people will hire one of these to move house so you'll see students riding through the town with all of their worldly goods on the uh, back leads. You're growing up with the bicycle. When you are uh, three years old in Holland, you learn how to bike and it's easy, you are uh, quick everywhere. Uh, I used to uh, go on bicycle. It's cheap, it's good for the health, for your movement. And handy. Handy, yeah. 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 Bye. <laughs> but in the car you're always alone, and on the bike it's funny, you inter interact with other people. On the street you talk, you laugh, you can even study for an exam on the way to the, to the campus if it's necessary. So you can go all around with the bicycle. You go there, you go there. With car you can't do that. You can't park here, you can't park here. Or you get fined for police here. Yeah? Oh, it's an oar. So one thing you'll find that's very apparent when you're here is that it is almost completely silent. This is the quietest city that I've ever ridden a bike in or been in. For example, this street, you could stand in the roadway for minutes at a time without seeing a car. The reason why it's pleasant to cycle here is because the infrastructure removes conflicts. And so you don't have people cycling in close proximity to fast cars or large trucks, not terribly often anyway. We have to have deliveries to a center like this, but we don't have through traffic in a place like this. And so this is relatively peaceful. And by having the street as a street mainly for bicycles, as this is, we have enormous numbers of people using the streets and able to get to the shops. We can make the whole place look more attractive. So the first thing you see when you come out of the train station is this massive bike parking structure. The taxi stand is located away from the front of the station. Over there, that very small parking lot, that's where you can get a taxi. You don't have taxis jostling for customers. If you want a taxi, you have to go and seek it out. Okay, well, we are here in the northwestern part of Groningen, the Korrewegwijk. It's built in the 1930s and behind me you will see the canal, which is the Van Starkenborg canal. It's the canal which leads from Amsterdam to uh, Germany. So it's an important canal. A lot of ships are here 
the whole day and the whole night. It's open 24 hours, six days a week. Behind here is a suburb area with a lot of young people with long, young children. They all have to go to work, go to school. They have to pass the bridge. 13,000 cyclists each day will pass this bridge. It's an old bridge, it's a swing bridge. It will open sometimes 10 minutes, so it will take a long, long time when you can pass. That means that we have made this separate bridges which you can use when the bridge is open. So you never can say when you have to go to school, well, I'm late because the bridge was open. But it gives you options. Some people will wait, some people uh, take the, the bridges just behind uh, the swing bridge. In the morning hour, you might see that a lot of people will use the, the, the separate bridge to go to their work. But then you go home and you think, well, I've had been working for a long day, I will wait. There are so, so many things that have been done to improve livability here in Groningen. As you have seen, everything is attainable by bike. Through smart transportation planning, all obstacles have been removed. And the result is a beautiful city that's quiet, healthy, and fun, and pleasant. Like, say, if you want to go to the movie theater. There are hundreds of bike parking spaces out front, and hundreds more protected in a garage out back. But that's just something that's not remarkable in the Netherlands. Look at the quality of the pathways throughout the city. The brick pavers are flawless in spots. It's hard to find a defect anywhere or a spot where it's uneven. Maintenance is a priority because they want people to have a smooth ride. That's because the city does not encourage traveling by car and thus the money they save, they can continue to build beautiful places that you can walk on and bike on and take transit on and yes, even drive your car when you need to. And the bicycle isn't considered to be a, a strange toy. It's not a sporting object. It's a simple method of transportation. You no longer, you don't think about cycling any more than you think about your feet when you're walking. Well, we came here because we looked for the best place in the world to cycle. And uh, therefore, we ended up looking at uh, Fernigan. Because when you've looked at everywhere that there is, there is simply nowhere quite like this. So, because using the bike, you can go in the town, have a drink, like the students behind me, or go to the town, go to the market, go to your work, go to see your friends. So, it's a, a mode of transport which keeps you alive.